Hello everyone. I welcome you to today's lecture. Today our topic is on the East and West conflict. So what is East-West conflict? East-West conflict refers to a period of intense tension, antagonism and competition between two world superpowers. One from the East and one from the West. This conflict is popularly called the Cold War. The term Cold War was coined by Walter Lippmann in the year 1944. And it is referred to as Cold War because it was a type of war that did not directly involve the use of weapons. So it was a type of war that the people involved in the war did not go to the battlefield to fight physically. Rather, it was an ideological war. Historically, historians trace the origin of the Cold War to the 1918 to 1921 Bolshevik Revolution in Russia. But the war intensified after 1945, following the end of the Second World War. So after the Second World War, the countries who were involved in this war, especially the European countries, most of them had exhausted their resources in the Second and the First World War, and they were economically and politically weak. So two world superpowers emerged. And these two world superpowers, one emerged from the western side of the world, and the second emerged from the eastern. The western leading to the formation of the western bloc, and then the east also leading to the formation of the eastern bloc. The Western Bloc was led by the United States of America, whilst the Eastern Bloc was led by Russia or, let's say, Soviet Union. These two countries were the countries involved in the Cold War. And the war was not a war that was fought on the battlefield. Rather, it was an ideological war. During the period of the Cold War, both countries, the United States of America, shared the ideology that in order for the world economies to recover from the effects of the Second World War, countries should adopt the system of capitalism in their countries. Russia, on the other hand, also argued that in order for the world to recover from the effects of the Second World War, countries should adopt the practice of or the ideology of socialism. So these were the two main ideologies, capitalism propagated by the United States of America, the Western Bloc, and then socialism propagated by Russia from the Eastern Bloc. What each of these countries did was to sell out these ideologies to countries across the world, to let them buy into their ideology so that they become part of them. Any country that bought into the ideology of capitalism formed an alliance with the United States of America. This alliance led to the formation of what is known as NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And the main purpose of NATO was to spread and expand the ideology of capitalism across the world. In response to the formation of NATO, Russia and its allies from the eastern parts of the world also formed an alliance under the Warsaw Pact Treaty in the year 1955. These two countries developed themselves very well in three areas. First, they developed themselves industrially, produced their own goods and services. They also developed themselves in terms of nuclear weapons, so that in case there is a war, they are well prepared to embark on it and to win the battle. And then thirdly, they also developed themselves ideologically. So what is capitalism? In simple terms, when we talk about capitalism, it refers to the system of a practice where the economic resources are owned by private individuals in the country. So the individuals are the owners and the establishers of businesses and industries. Because individuals own the resources and they are the ones who establish the businesses, the industries, the schools, the hospitals and the like, their main motivation is to make more money. And so they go all out in the quest for profit seeking. It is characterized by high prices of goods and services and then low wages for their workers. In capitalism, there is a huge gap between the wealthy and 
the poor. Socialism is also both an economic or political system. And in socialism, it simply means that the government should be in charge of the resources of the country. And so it becomes the responsibility of the government to be the establisher of the industries, the hospitals, the schools, the businesses. In socialism, the, the government has control over the prices of goods and services. The idea is that every member of the society should be as comfortable as it is, and every member should have equal access to every resource or facilities that are available in the country. So in socialism, there is so much regard for the well-being of individuals. There's high wages, there's low prices of goods and services, and everybody is treated equally. The next is communism. Communism is an ideology that is rooted chiefly in the ideas of two thinkers, Karl Marx and then Vladimir Lenin. Some of the elements of communism is that capitalism is seen as an unjust evil system because it permits one class, which is usually seen as the wealthy class, to exploit the lower people in society. Capitalism must be destroyed and replaced by a classless society. In other ways, communism is at elimination of all inequalities. In communism, there is a transition to a classless society. In communism, there is a belief that there should be a transition to a classless society directed by a group of leaders. So in this lecture, we have looked at the East and the West conflict, and we have said that the East and the West conflict is referred to as Cold War. It was a period of intense antagonism and tension competition between two world superpowers. The Eastern world, led by Russia, propagating the ideology of socialism. The Western world, led by the United States of America, propagating the ideology of um, capitalism. Thank you.